Okay, well, well thanks for joining us today. Um, uh, this is the fourth in a, a series of podcasts we tried to put together today for schools. Uh, we're focused on, um, uh, you know, during this shutdown, uh, let, me, let me give you the context. This is March 17th, so we don't know when you're listening to it, but we're recording it on March 17th. This is in the afternoon. Uh, it's the day after the state's announced that we're going to be closing schools um, uh, through um, April 6th. Um, and at two o'clock today, so just a little bit before our call, um, the state superintendent um, uh, held a meeting with schools. Um, the state board of education is going to be meeting next week and going to be considering is April 6th the right date or what do we need to do beyond April 6th? So um, I'm providing that context because we know this information will stay out there. And, um, you know, if we've learned anything over the last few days is the world can change real quickly. Um, and uh, so we may, we may sound like brilliant people in a couple of days, or we may sound completely <laughs> different based on the context. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so today we, we've already held a podcast on well, how can schools um, get food to kids through the food and nutrition program. Um, uh, we've, we've, we've talked about educational resources and, and things that families can use during the shutdown, as well as, uh, as, you know, potentially if schools move to a more distance learning, what are some options that they can consider? And then we talked, um, our third one was about technology and the, how can, how can, uh, how can we address social equity issues related to moving to a more distance learning? Um, uh, situation. So this is probably the most important one um, for me today, which is how do we, how do we focus on the mental health and wellness, um, first and foremost for our students, but also for our families and our staff. Um, and uh, I don't think that I'm exaggerating to say we are in a, um, you know, we're experiencing some trauma. Everyone you know, is experiencing some trauma. This is a, a pretty scary situation. Um, you know, I, I'll, I will share personally. Um, I'm pretty terrified about this. My daughter, about 30 minutes ago, came home from the hospital. She spent five days there with pneumonia. And um, let me tell you, Mama and Papa Bear were not happy about their their daughter. It was not related to um, she had the flu that, that progressed into pneumonia. Um, but um, I uh, I have never washed my hands as many times as I have in the past five days. <laughs> so. Um, so, uh, so th there's your context. Let me give you the, the folks that have taken time out of their busy schedules to, to join us today. Uh, we've got Dwayne Hampton, who's assistant principal at high school in McAllister, and was someone that, that had reached out and said that we should be worried about students' mental health and well-being. Uh, we've got Tiffany Briggs, who's a counselor at Harding Charter Prep in Oklahoma City, along with Joe Hughes, who's assistant principal for ninth and 10th graders at Harding Charter Prep. We have... Trina House, who's a licensed professional counselor here in Oklahoma City, as well as Deshaun Thornton, licensed professional uh, counselor. So we have no shortage of people that um, that are that are concerned about um, uh, mental health and wellness. And um, thank you all for joining today. Um, so let's let's uh, jump right in. Um, maybe we'll just do a round robin here. What are your thoughts about what can what can schools do during this shutdown for, you know, to, to, um, uh, you know, to, uh, to ensure that students, maybe primarily focus on students and then we'll get to families and, and staff uh, later. Uh, what, what can, what can schools be doing? And I ask you maybe cite one resource and then if we, if we get around to everybody, then maybe uh, you know, we'll see if there's anything else that's missing. Um, I'm just going to use my computer as the guide. So, Dwayne, you're in the top left. You're up first. Well, hello, Brent. Thanks for having me. I know uh, you and I had had some conversations about some different aspects of this shutdown. And one thing that came to my mind was all of the kids who they require the structure, they look forward to the structure of school. And, and with the school shutdown, now that's not going to be in place. And, and for some of them, uh, we talk about ACEs and adverse childhood, ex, you know, traumas. This is going to be an ACE that could push some kids over the edge. And, um, you know, after, after you and I had had that conversation, I reached out to some, one of my counselors at McAllister high school. And I said, you know, what, what can we do? And we're in uncharted waters. And she came up with a couple of things. She said, you know, there is a national text line that's 
You text home to that number and you get in touch with a licensed professional counselor that will uh, can assist not just students, but also families uh, who are struggling at this time. Let me make sure I get that number right. Is it 741-741? 741-741. And they would text the word home, H-O-M-E. All right, and, and what, what what line is that? Who's who's operating that? Uh, let me look just a second. Uh, sure. Matt, all of this is going to be in the show notes. That's why I want to make sure I get all of this correct here. It says crisis text line. That is the national the national crisis text line. Okay. Free twenty four seven support at your fingertips. Perfect. Okay. But. You know, after after talking with you and after talking with her, I just thought, I thought, what can we do as a school to help kids who are struggling? Because a lot of our kids, and I'm not just talking about McAllister, I'm talking about Oklahoma as a, as a whole. Uh, we live in a state of poverty, and a lot of these kids can't afford counseling, and they rely on the school counselor day in, day out, and now that's not there for them. And that's traumatic in and of itself. Indeed. Let's, let's continue on. Tiffany, give me your initial thoughts here. Well, to kind of, you know, piggyback on what Duane was saying, it's true. I mean, I think back to while we were in session and the number of students that, you know, came to my office and just were needing just daily support um, and not being able to have that anymore. So in the conversations that me and Mr. Hughes have had, you know, I've um, made myself available or I'm going to make myself available to um, students, whether it be by telephone, Skype, FaceTime, you know, whatever the case may be, because I still want to be, you know, um, of support. Um, I mean, we're in a tough time and, you know, with us not being in school, I mean, we are going to have to get creative when it comes to meeting the needs of students. Um, I know uh, just off the top of my head, I don't know if you guys have heard of Pivot. I know their staff um, is currently um, um, at work. So they have um, outpatient behavioral health therapists there um, on call. So, um, you know, and, and they're pretty willing to, you know, continue to provide services to their clients and any new clients that may be needing it. So that that is one resource that I know of for sure. Um, so is Pivot is that a is that is that based here in Oklahoma City? Or yeah, or? yeah, it's a nonprofit based in Oklahoma City. They primarily serve um, at at risk youth um, in Oklahoma City and the surrounding areas. So, okay. great. <laughs> Trina, tell us sort of how are you thinking about this as a as a as a as a licensed counselor. So just, I know you said that you want to address talking to or dealing with the students first, but I feel like the challenge is getting the information to the students. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so getting the information to the students, I, with our agency, we are totally trans, um, doing everything on telehealth now. I mean, we still, as of right now, are able to go out and see our clients and they can still come to us but we are doing everything to via telehealth. So we can see clients just like we're seeing you guys via um, like a Zoom chat. So that's one way that we are able to continue to provide services. Um, but again, a lot of our, it's, it's having to go through the parents. So I feel like a lot of our parents are not really concerned so much about like the trauma or the mental health part. They're trying to worry about, you know, food and childcare and the basic things that you guys are already talking about, which I think is great for them to have that support and know that you guys are, you know, considering that those are the issues that they're having right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a Maslow's hierarchy, right? You gotta Absolutely. Make food, you got food and shelter first. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, it's traumatic just having these changes in our lives. I think <laughs> the secondary level of trauma is, um, well, we don't know. I don't think we know who who all has it, but we're going to find out a lot more here in the next week or two. And yeah. um, you know, I think it's sad to say, like we're going to know people that are hurt by this, um, whether it's yeah. just short term or, or long. You know, like if it's, and I will uh, also offer what just like what Tiffany was saying. We we do have uh, people on call as well, so we're um, we have somebody available twenty four seven by phone, so that you know we're available if somebody has a crisis situation. But then again, uh, we can provide services via telehealth so if there's a 
situation where we cannot go into the home for some reason, we can still provide those services. That's great. And Trina, is your, what's your agency's name? The Prevention Center. The Prevention Center. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll try and get, if people are able to reach out, um, if I can get your information, we'll make sure to, to include that in the, in the um, show notes as well. So okay. folks need to reach out with questions. Okay. Deshaun, jump in here. Uh, hey, everybody. How's it going? Uh, I was just kind of listening to everybody's uh, responses. You know, this is kind of a, a new normal for everybody, not only the families and the people that are challenged going through this issue, but us also as professionals learning how to navigate through uh, a crisis like this. And I even wonder, you know, even after this is over with, life is going to be very different for everybody. Um, not even now, but just a long time after this pandemic passes. Um, but I also wonder, you know, with us, uh, it was really good to see the, the president this morning talk about uh, opening up more uh, funding for telehealth and telemedicine and for families to make sure that they're being checked on and able to check in with their health care providers. Um, but, you know, it also challenges me to, to, to ask, you know, are we offering the right things? Uh, a lot of these families come to us for counseling, but we have to do a lot of things that are outside. Uh, the scope of counseling very often. And one of the things that we try to do is help to, con uh, to connect uh, the families with community partners who can also help to alleviate some of those things that need to be taken care of that are not necessarily uh, fall under the counseling guideline. Um, and I think right now what people have on their side is technology. Uh, as much as a headache as, as it is, you know, it can be very instrumental for learning and for filling in the gap where students are now missing uh, out on time where they were, would be in the classroom learning, you know, kind of everyday sort of things. But now there's going to be that that kind of gap and then that curve that you get from summer when kids haven't been in school all summer long and they don't remember anything from the previous semester. So uh, I think we have a lot of challenges ahead of us. And I think we have people who are more than willing to help fight this fight that we're in right now. Amen. Amen. All right, Joe, here's your introductory comments. So I'd like to kind of piggyback it off everyone. I was actually talking to um, Beth, who works at the State Department of Education. Um, she gave me an email of different resources available for parents. Um, I think the, uh, what could be just a added solution or added uh, bonus for parents if this was posted to where um, parents are used to using their home webpage for their, for their schools. So I think if schools post this information on their website, it may be a good resource for them to kind of navigate to instead of going to the State Department trying to search everywhere forward. If they had it posted on their website, it could be an added resource for those parents to kind of utilize and have access to it um, more quickly than they would on their website. That'd be fantastic. If you wouldn't mind forwarding that to me, we'll get that. So, so at opsrc.net, we've created a, just top, you can click the banner. Um, we've got a COVID-19 banner. Um, we'll, we'll post that in there, but then we can also get that out to our membership and encourage them to, to be okay. posting that. Um, you're talking about Sudath, I think? Yes. Point. Yeah, she's there in their, their, their trauma-informed office, and yeah. she's a fantastic resource as well. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, I, don't, I guess I'm trying to figure out. There's just so many different kind of kind of ways to go with this right now. The um, I don't want to put a, a smiley face on this situation because this is serious and it's, it poses lots of challenges. There are some opportunities here, though. Um, we talked during um, the second podcast I did earlier today. We're talking about educational resources. Um, both folks we had on said, you know, look, this is this is an opportunity, right? We talked about the, the need to, to develop structure um, for kids at home, right? So, so parents developing structure, but also taking this as an opportunity to kind of reconnect, right? Like reconnect as a family, reconnect to, um, you know, I talked about, I've got a garden that's going to get some attention here <laughs> as soon as the weather gets a little bit better. Um, and uh, the bushy house is going to be a lot cleaner than it is right now. <laughs> and um, I think there's some opportunities to, you know, we mentioned the power of technology. Uh, and hopefully folks, you know, my, um, my daughter downloaded Babbel, which is a technology you can learn languages on. And she was spending a couple hours on Spanish um, yesterday. Um, 
And so I think that there are some, you know, with this sort of unstructured time, there are some opportunities um, and hopefully people will take advantage of that. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to minimize, you know, like, like this, these obviously are only opportunities for folks that have the resources to do some of this. And um, I don't expect this to be a, a net positive, but I do think that there are some, some opportunities that are presented. Um, we have on our website some different places um, about how do you talk to kids about this challenge. PBS has put some information out. Does anyone have any any thoughts about that? I mean, just specific to this, or or just sort of getting kids to talk about their feelings and how they're doing. I like to chime in. There's a website called VeryWellMind.com. Spell that very well. I very guess. well mind m i n d dot com okay dot com and if you go on their their main page right now they have a kind of a stress management tool that is uh an article that helps families uh talk about coping with the anxiety about of coronavirus and just talking to their kids also about what that means and kind of uh to minimize some of the fear mongering that we see sometimes in the in the news um and to kind of get people uh at a at, a, at an ease that they can be comfortable with, just depending on whatever their family situation is. That's, that's a good resource. Yeah. Um, I think it's so critical that we get, we don't want to scare kids. We don't want to scare anybody, right? Um, I think we want to, there's a balance that we've got to learn to strike about how do we talk about the situation and recognize the challenges associated with the situation, yet not... Um, you know, put ourselves into you know, panic and anxiety. Um, so hopefully that, that those resources can help. How, how do you all as, as, you know, as, as counselors working with kids or the, the assistant principals are still counselors, right? <laughs> this is such a title. How do you talk to kids about traumatic events and, or, you know, maybe potential um, tra traumatic events? How do you, how do you, how do you get kids to, you know, to open up where you, you make it a safe conversation for them to have? I think education is key. Um, that's kind of where I start. Just kind of uh, determine what they know or what they think that they know. Start there and then kind of educate them. I think that helps to um, calm anxiety when there's some understanding there. So that's where I start is where, what do you know? And then kind of educate them and just talk them through it, help them process their thoughts and feelings about it. Um, I think that in itself is... Um, that in itself is therapeutic, just being able to talk through all, the, all of those thoughts and feelings. So that's pretty much where I start. And then, you know, after that, helping them with some coping skills and things like that. Yeah. Tiffany, what do you do at school when a kid comes to you and is struggling? Or if you just maybe just assume that a kid's struggling? Well, I, I definitely agree with Trina. I definitely, um, my approach is to educate for sure. Um, obviously, I work with older kids, um, so it's a little um, easier to have that approach. Um, I think you're the first but, person that's ever said it's easier to talk to an a teenager than an elementary. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're right. It's, it's not easy, but um, but for the sake of conversation, for that part, I think yeah. um, kids being a little older, um, it is um, a little um, um, they're a little bit more willing to um, to accept, you know, that part of it when we are talking about, you know, um, how, you know, like Trina said, what do they know, um, and then just kind of going from there. Um, <clears throat> this generation, um, they're growing up in a very interesting time, if that makes sense. Um, so there are a lot of ways to um a lot of different ways to approach the conversation when it comes to trauma um i know with um you know working in a school there's there's several layers um specifically you know um the stress that just comes with being a teenager in high school um and then obviously you know anything that's going at, going on at home um so there's there's different you know, layers. And a lot of times when students do come to me, um, I do give them the option of sometimes we don't even have to have a conversation. You know, sometimes they're just needing to have a safe 
safe space to kind of decompress, decompress, recharge, um, and then go back to class. Um, but, you know, obviously with them not being in school, it's a, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, so again, that goes back to, you know, trying to be a little bit more creative in how we tackle, um, you know, some of these um, things that, you know, students are, you know, struggling with right now. Um, but in the school setting, you know, um, my main goal is just providing um, a safe space uh, for students to feel comfortable to come and talk. Um, and like I said, there are cases where they don't want to talk. They'll just kind of come and, you know, sit down and, you know, we, we don't talk. And um, and if they do decide to have a conversation, then we will. But um, but again, like I said, you know, with us not having um, the um, having access to school and um, having that structured environment, you know, it, it is starting to get a little bit more difficult and we're having to be a little bit more creative with how we address some of these things. Yeah. And Brent, yeah, just jumping in here and taking my assistant principal hat off and putting my parent hat on. Yeah, I've got twin ten-year-old boys who are fourth graders who are at home, and uh, just to piggyback off what Tiffany said, you know, it's easier to talk to high schoolers, but it's harder to talk to those elementary kids because they see the same press conferences that we as adults see. My kids now have a full understanding of what coronavirus is because as a parent, I have failed to limit their exposure to that, those informational press conferences. And I think, especially for my kids, because they both have anxiety and ADD, that's, as a parent, you know, I found myself having to limit the amount of time that they watch the television, especially if it's something like, and it, especially if it's something that uh, is informational in nature, like uh, the governor or the president telling us how many coronavirus cases there are, you know, they, they are very aware of where they are on the map and they, they know that it's headed towards them. And so as a parent, I've found myself kind of having to limit that exposure, if that makes sense. No, I think that's fair. Um, I've had to have the conversation with my daughter and, and talk about it. Um, who's you know, almost 10, 10 years old in fourth grade as well. So it's, uh, you know, I don't like to lie to my, my kids. Um, I, it, it's one of those, sometimes there's some information you don't share. Um, I'm sure not, however I'm doing it, I'm screwing it up somehow. Um, but it's like one of the truisms of parenting, right? <laughs> but um, yeah. Maybe shift over to staff for a second. Joe, have you had have you been able to talk to your staff at all? I know it's spring break, so it's it's been uh, uh, I say limited um, due to just emails. That's kind of where our uh, main platform right now is. Yeah, uh, communication. Um, I, I think in in regards to just educating staff on, in terms of um, how that can be a resource. Um, right now, uh, we're trying to create that online um, platform for students to have access. Um, I know we have a, a number of students taking an advanced placement exam in May. Um, those dates hasn't really shifted. And how do we provide resources for those students so that they will feel comfortable taking that exam? It's kind of our push right now. Uh, in regards to uh, working with students, I think that one of the most important parts is ensuring the student that it's okay to feel how they feel and creating a safe place for them to be okay and understanding that it might take longer um, and there is no time limit on trauma, um, but to allow them in that space to have the discussion and an open conversation uh, will, will definitely alleviate some of them, their, their distress that they're going through, so. Yeah, I think I grew up in a big, Catholic family, um, tough working class construction. And if any of my family members are listening, I grew up in a great family, um, but I'm going to complain about you a little bit. So. Um, we didn't talk about feelings, right? Like those are things you just, you just stuck away. Right. Like, um, uh, and, uh, the one thing that I've tried to, to change, I mean, I've tried to embody a lot of the things that my family taught me, but I've tried to be open and honest about how I'm feeling. And I think it's, I think it's okay to tell kids that you're scared. I don't, you don't want to scare them. Right. But I think it's okay to say, 
You know, I think when, when kids realize that adults are, we're all struggling with this. I mean, if you aren't struggling right now, you ain't human, right? Or you don't get it. <laughs> um, and uh, I think if we can prove to kids that, you know, that we relate on this level, this is, this is screwing with all of our lives. Um, to me, that, that goes a long way to, uh, to connect. I'm no, I'm no professional, but um, I think that's, that's how I'm trying to approach it, at least as a dad. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think um, it is important to um, make sure that these kids know that it, it's okay to feel what you're feeling. I mean, we're, we're all, like you said, we're all being affected by this one way or another. Um, but that that's, you know, something, an approach that I usually try to take with my students if they are struggling with something. I mean, that's a natural reaction to trauma. I mean, it's, you know, that's just your body, um, you know, reacting to trauma. So I think that is definitely important um, to, you know, be able to connect with, um, or just anybody on that level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do we support teachers? I mean, next week we're going to be off spring break. It's not entirely clear to me what teachers are we doing. Um, the, the, that's the one area where I think we've got to get some clarification from the State Department. I think things are kind of shut down through through April 6th, but, you know, I think teachers are still going to want to connect, right? I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm already climbing the walls of my house. Um, so how can we support teachers so they can process their anxiety and they can also, uh, how, how do we empower teachers to, to also help kids with their, with their mental well-being? Just like I was saying before, I feel like it starts with the adults. So it starts with the parents, it starts with the teachers. So just like the kids need that support, the teachers will need it as well. So if they have a therapist that they can call, that I, I suggest that they do that, they have somebody they can talk through their anxieties with, because I, I feel like it passes down. So it, it goes from the adults down. So as long as we are level-headed and we can, you know, maintain our um, level of anxiety, then we can kind of pass that on to our kids, you know, a little bit more um, information and level headedness whenever we're, whenever we're talking about coronavirus and all that stuff. So I believe that the same, I think that they need the same support um, as far as counseling and mental health. And, and I want to say for sure, um, nutrition goes a long way. I know I've been really like hardcore into um, brain health and mental health. And so all of that stuff plays a role. Like even just being dehydrated, 2% will modify your thought process. So just, you know, making sure we're drinking water and doing the basic things that we know we should be doing, just continuing those things, I think it's going to make a big difference as well. So, Trina, you mean like my stress eating of overeating Cheez-Its? That's, no, that's taking care of myself, right? Let's not do that. <laughs> Man, I was going to say, you know, I heard a teacher tell a kid one time, he said, who was struggling, said, when you're on the airplane and they, t they take you through the, uh, the mask, conversation they say put your mask on first take care of yourself first and then help yep. others Absolutely. and that's exactly what I would encourage our teachers to do because self-care is going to be the best care for them right now then they can worry about our kids and I know that sounds probably terrible but that's the best that's the best analogy that I can I can use right now look at my shirt says self-care is not selfish so like it. I, I'm I with like you. it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, and even if it is selfish, who cares? If that allows you to be more helpful to others, then that's that's what you have to do, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, well, uh, I think we've already gone 30 minutes, and I didn't want to make this too long. I, um, before we before we close up, what are what are things that you know you, you wanted to get out the movie and had a chance to to say, or what are other you know any any parting thoughts as schools you know continue to grapple with this pandemic? Um, I'll say that as far as educating yourself on what's going on, make sure that people are sticking with reputable websites, okay. um, like the CDC, your local government websites, you know, I mean, I know it's hard, easier said than done, but don't pay attention to what's going on on social media. Um, but just make sure you're getting the correct information. I think that's kind of what's contributing to a lot of people's anxiety is they're getting incorrect information. So just make sure you're referring to the reputable websites. Um, and then, 
let me piggyback on that. Not only reputable websites, but sometimes just stepping away, right? Like, like there's so much information out there right now. Like, you know, I started reading, you want to scare the crap out of yourself, go read about what's going on in Italy. Right. And, and then don't, because I already did. And it is not helpful. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of information out there and sometimes we've just got to step away and, you know, focus on ourselves. That's, that's, but I think that's really helpful. Is if you're getting the wrong information, um, it's even worse. What else, Tiffany, before I cut you off? Um, and kind of what you said earlier, you know, just kind of use this time to reconnect um, with family. Um, you know, I have two boys and we've been in the house for five days and <laughs> it's you know, it's a struggle, but we're making it. But, um, you know, they they don't know yet, but I have a schedule planned for them. I've kind of let them, you know, fortnight themselves to <laughs> they can't fortnight anymore. So, um, but yeah, just definitely using this time to reconnect. I mean, and I also want people to understand, I mean, even though, you know, we can't, they're advising against, you know, being around crowds and things like that. I mean, it's still okay to take a walk, you know, through your neighborhood. If you just want to walk around the block, um, you know, you're still able to do that. So don't feel like you ha you're confined to your house. Um, at least, I mean, even if it's just sitting on the front porch, you know, I mean, that could definitely um, make a difference. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that we, we want to make sure we cover today? All right, well, I don't want to belabor, and I really appreciate people taking time out of your busy schedules during this crazy, crazy time. Um, thank you so much for your, for your time and efforts. Um, I want to make sure we get um, people's contact information. Um, Joe, I'll probably get, get everybody else's from you, and we'll, we'll, we'll make this available um, within our show notes. Um, if there, if anyone has any questions or additional recommendations um, or, you know, sort of recommendations on where we should go look for more resources. OPSRC.net has all of um, my contact information. And um, uh, we'll, we're going to get through this. Um, it's just, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be some different few days, uh, different days ahead, ahead for us. So thanks everyone for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brent. Thank yep. you guys. Have a good one. Thank you.